Hi, welcome to Trail House. This is Simo. Today I would like to show you my trailer to camper conversion with a Moroccan style. I've spent eight months working on this conversion, but I am very happy with the results. Before even I started working on the camper, I had three goals in mind. Number one, I wanted the trailer to stay lightweight. It is a 6x12x6, by by six, all aluminum, and I want to keep the weight down. Number two, I wanted an open feel inside the trailer so I didn't focus too much on the overhead cabinets I didn't install any of that I wanted a lot of floor space and overhead space number three I wanted to make sure that this trailer is totally off grid so I am able to uh, say that you know and I have achieved that goal because I just came back from a long trip and I, w I boondocked all the time most of the time and I was able to stay off grid for days and weeks at a time because I do have a complete solar system I have gray fresh water tank and I have running water so I'm pleased with with the build I don't have a black water tank but that's not a problem I designed it to be that way so let's go ahead and give you the tour so hopefully we can cover all the components of the build <coughs> The first thing that I want to mention is that the trailer is has a name, it's called Casablanca, and that is the largest city in Morocco, that's where I was born. Uh, the Casablanca is the, uh, means the White House in, in Spanish, um, but as you can see we decided to keep that uh, white color inside and outside. And the other thing is that because we decided to add a twist to this build, I added, uh, I injected some Moroccan style um, uh, into this build uh, by just adding some accent uh, uh, pieces of furniture, you know, not, not much, but just to give it a, a Moroccan feel. For example, these uh, Moroccan pillows and this handmade rug made in Morocco in the Atlas Mountains and also I've got some Moroccan decor and you will continue to see that Moroccan theme throughout the tour. Um, what I do want to show you here very quick, I want to show you how <coughs> I sit outside. This is a patio area here. Um, I like this. I decided to go this route because it's really nice. Um, but you can have a different style if you want to. I spent a lot of time during the day um, I decided to use an umbrella with a base installed permanently attached to the door. And this area is a 6x6 six six and it accommodates two chairs and a table. This section here, um, I do have a table here. Also I have some storage underneath. This table here is a, uh, is a piece made of a piece of plywood with epoxy and it's smooth it looks like glass it's the, easy to clean waterproof and, um, and it's just um, uh, it looks great so we decided to you know just uh, spend a little bit of time uh, to work on this but the results are great we did the same thing here um, this is a table it swivels uh, we did the same thing this is a like, lagoon style table it is not a lagoon leg but I decided to go ahead and build one that functions just as a lagoon table and the tabletop also the same way two coats of paint and two coats of epoxy and you will continue to see that even on the kitchen countertop I like that look it looks like a glass or marble or even uh, it's just super nice to have this it, it resists <coughs> heat but it's easy to clean um, but also it's waterproof so we'll come back here to the storage area um, I decided to use curtains instead of doors and you're going to continue to see that as well. The idea is to keep the weight down but also it's they're easy to work with and I can wash them and put them back in place. This is the storage area. It accommodates uh, uh, a diesel heater and the tank. I had that inside. I don't smell anything. It's uh, It was installed properly. Um, I do have room to store the, uh, the two folding tables and some equipment to maintain my solar panels. <coughs> These um, stay in place, these curtains. Um, I have one on each side and even when it's windy they don't move because I've got a, a locking system at the bottom of the curtains. The bed here is a slide out bed. Uh, it is in a couch mode. Um, I do have a lot of storage underneath the bed. We do use these pillows. I discovered these uh, work better than uh, than just using the other half of the bed as a cushion for the back. 
it was not comfortable so we used these uh, pillows all six of them and also we used two of them at night to sleep on uh, we just used two uh, pillowcases that um, that are more comfortable than than this fabric um, here we have breathing lights um, they are flexible I decided not to have a ceiling fan and again that's by choice instead I've decided to go this route uh, these are Sirocco fans they are pricey but they are very very nice uh, they are flexible you can just adjust them just about it any any direction and also I can turn this on right next to the window and again I install it right next to the window so I can take advantage of that window I can open the window and create some a good airflow and I did the same thing on this side as well that is the section for the uh, for the kitchen The uh, trailer did not have uh, windows, so I was able to install one on each side. The, uh, this system here with the fans next to the windows, again, they work just great. And that keeps the uh, ceiling um, uh, free of any um, future uh, leaks or anything like that. And the ceiling is actually made of uh, cedar planks. Uh, what you don't see here is the uh, this trailer is totally insulated. I use three materials to insulate this trailer, not only just to insulate the trailer, but also to uh, uh, I use the vapor barrier and also I use a noise reducing material as well. So it really feels nice. There is an air gap here in the ceiling, and again, I decided to do that, and that also helps trap that air and that helps with the insulation, especially the heat. Now you heard me talking about uh, creating a, an overhead space um, and the floor space. Uh, let me just give you an idea, an example, what I did here on the floor. This floor is so wide, you know, this, this path right here is, I mean, I, you know, I could have two adults walking side by side without a problem. And in order for me to achieve that, as you can see right here, it's just a super wide space here. And I want to be able to walk back and forth to the, from the patio to the kitchen. And again, the reason why I did that is I was able to uh, design this section of, of the camper differently. I started with an 18-inch deep countertop. That is the widest section here on this side. That's it, 18 inches on this side. Now, the bed um, um, is a 26-inch um, wide in a couch mode. It is a queen-size bed. Um, basically it's just a queen size mattress and it's a slide out but I cut that mattress in half and I uh, and I have about I use about 26 inches um, on this side this side again I started with 18 inches and then I dropped it down to 16 inches this is an extended piece of the countertop but it folds down and also I moved it down to 10 inches for that shelf and then lastly 8 inches deep for these cabinets that's why I was able to achieve this much space here these cabinets here uh, eight of them uh, they are great super lightweight they're made of plastic as you can see they don't have any knobs um, they stay in place they stay closed even though I traveled thousands and thousands of miles and I never had one open um, very easy to use but also uh, they hold a lot of stuff so um, we use the one section one row for the clothes and the other section for the camping gear the other storage is the overhead storage. This is pretty much the only overhead storage. I have uh, three boxes uh, and the shelf is super lightweight and I don't have to use bungee cords to secure these because you know, they sit deep down inside the tray or shelf. We decided to clean this area here and cover the, uh, the spring to the door and all the other components. We have our little friend. Uh, 
everything here is a 12 volt uh, system the lights the fans um, and we're gonna move to the kitchen and we'll talk more about that this section here this is the 12 volt plus it's a 112 volt 120 volt uh, uh, TV as well so I can uh, use it either uh, using my battery or I can connect it directly to the shore power um, I only use it to connect the, my phone to it because I'd like to watch TV on a bigger screen this shelf here <clears throat> um, it works great it holds a lot of stuff but also what it does it's just a frame for the curtains again you see the idea of using the curtains instead of doors because what's behind that curtain is my fresh water tank and the way I install it it only takes about a 10 inches um, um, from the width of the trailer which I really like that that gives me also a lot of floor space and as you can see this this is the fresh water tank and uh, it's serviceable I modified it I installed a sensor and I attached it to the gauge uh, and then I can monitor the water level from the kitchen uh, also I've got a big uh, opening that I can service it I can clean it and uh, sanitize it once in a while and speaking of fans in addition to these two fans I do have a passive ventilation system and the floor as you see and this is a huge deal this is a game changer and I like that um, it keeps the uh, trailer uh, um, cool or um, it, it just allows the trailer to breathe and I don't have I don't develop any smell or any scent inside the trailer even though um, I may uh, keep it closed for days or weeks at a time and I keep this open but as you notice it is uh, has a, a double uh, screen the first screen is for mosquitoes and small insects and the other one is for rodents so it's a double screen and it works great uh, you keep it open most of the time but also I can close it if I want to and I have this I can screw this in and keep it closed but I don't do that I decided to go ahead and add a uh, 1700 rpm fan computer fan with a switch and I can adjust the speed and this thing works great it, it is unbelievable and um, I just uh, when it gets warm inside the trailer I run this and I can feel a lot of air here very nice to have and I can adjust the speed and it's very very quiet super quiet We like the kitchen um, it is something that uh, I spent a lot of time building uh, because I had to build it from scratch and um, I couldn't find anything that would fit that 18 inch um, you know I just wanted to make sure that I use every square inch and I had to make sure that I measure everything everything has to fit so there's really not a lot of space here and as you can see here um, these um, cabinets just right here on the edge of the trailer and there is no room here between the shelf and the cabinets and as you can see here there's a little bit of gap there but that's again that's where my switch is and also I have the main shutoff valve for the tank and my water line and I can empty the, the tank if I want to um, uh, but I, I usually do that when I'm done camping but as you can see and here <coughs> I had to build this thing to fit perfectly right there the only wall that I have inside a trailer is this wall here it is a functional wall but it does not take um, it does not take away uh, the openness of this trailer um, I do like that uh, speaking of Moroccan style this is a Moroccan style backsplash um, it is um, it is a peel and stick but it is well made it ha it's a, has a 3d uh, effect uh, but I decided to put a quarter of an inch plywood behind it and then I put I did some trim work here to give it the look of a, the real tile but it's not the real tile functional easy to clean and super lightweight the kitchen cabinets um, if you wonder why I don't have the doors because I decided I wanted to make sure if I'm standing right here in front of the sink I don't want the uh, the cabinets to intrude and be right in my face even though I've got this space here if I'm standing here I was able to center that window and it's perfectly centered right there but even that I didn't want to have a lot of uh, uh, um, cabinets um, I don't want to have a lot of intrusion here on this side as you can see now 
it's not a big deal because I could just use a bungee cord here to secure these plates um, because I can't use a door there because some of these plates are big um, and also the pressure cooker also is um, it sits outside the uh, um, the cabinet now if I want to secure this even though it's wide open I don't have to do anything here uh, these stay in place. These are also Moroccan style bowls. I have Moroccan style um, uh, plates But um, the only thing that I need to secure is this pressure cooker I can put a small bungee cord again just like this one and I'm good to go The sink is uh, I think 15 inch by 15. It's flushed with the countertop um, I do have um, running water I have cold and hot water and if 13 uh, watt 13, 1300 watt uh, uh, stove cooktop stove I've uh, got some spices there and a knife holder cup holder um, it's just very compact but it's very practical there's another view uh, the drawers uh, work great. Um, I do have a fridge, a 12 volt fridge. It also uses AC. Um, it I can uh, it's, it slides out, but I, I can access the fridge without having to move it. As you can see, another thing that I decided to do is I rerouted all the plumbing for a clean look. And as you can see, you don't see any plumbing on top of that fridge. Again, that's by design. The only black thing that you see right there, that little thing right there that is part of the um, that's the uh, an RV style P trap <clears throat> and right here this is a Moroccan tagine um, it's a clay pot that I use for cooking um, and uh, for those who don't know what that is it's just a famous uh, uh, dish that, um, in Morocco so I did uh, use it a lot uh, on an 8,000 mile trip and I actually had some friends that who never had tagine before and they liked it and uh, I they kept asking for it so that was also a conversation piece um, and so many other things as well so it's just a different experience for people um, who who never uh, had a chance to visit Morocco so at least they get uh, to see some Moroccan items or they can uh, taste uh, some Moroccan food. I also use the cast iron uh, pots or skillets again that's by choice because I, I prefer that over the stainless steel I do cook a lot and if I'm in a hurry I can just go ahead and use the pressure cooker to save time and fuel. I do have a gas stove uh, it's a propane stove that I use as well and I keep it stored in one of those cabinets I think at the bottom left cabinet um, <clears throat> right here this is a uh, sitting area this is a bench super comfortable bench uh, there is probably about four inches of, of uh, padding material here I sit here most of the time and I could do some work here and as you can see the countertop same idea paint and epoxy it works great and when I sit here this is the view from this angle this is the uh, uh, the control uh, panel for um, this is just the water uh, uh, no I'm sorry this is the light the daylight the ceiling I forgot to mention I've got recess lights those four lights are dimmable and they provide uh, warm light these th other three here these are daylights and they're not dimmable just for this area and this uh, switch controls the three lights the water pump and this is the water level gauge that shows me how much water I have in the tank and obviously the outlets this is DC this is AC weather station and also have a uh, medicine cabinet now this is this area not only I sit here all the time I really like to utilize this space and and also it's my shower area as well it's a bathroom and a shower so I'll come back to the shower uh, but let's just focus on this side here. I do have a sink um, and a running water again. 
and I do have the hot water as well because of the heater that I have installed here on this wall right next to the, the door. Now I did manage to hide all the, uh, the water lines and the propane hose behind this V-shaped panel. Also I had to uh, 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 make it um, slanted a little bit as you can see um, it goes uh, it's slimmer at the bottom and again that's by design because I wanted that space at the bottom of the panel here so I can store my hand sanitizer and my soap now the top is about three and a half inches deep and the bottom is about an inch deep just kind of utilize and it is serviceable and I can remove it and service the heater if I need to there is some cement board behind around the heater uh, uh, the water heater but again I've never had a problem with it these curtains on the side I can just uh, move them out of the way if I'm using the water heater I have a mirror here um, and uh, let me just finish with this um, the, these uh, um, soap holders and this stuff here the semi-permanent I don't pack and unpack these items it's just less things to do when you try to uh, get ready to travel um, but this is also doesn't move I don't have to secure it I managed to use this this is again it's just three quarter of an inch uh, piece of uh, plywood paint and epoxy very nice uh, to clean and it very nice to the touch as well I did use two threaded rods here and one here to hold this piece in place plus I have some other brackets um, so it's less material I use curtains here so I can move this out of the way to access these two boxes this is my storage bathroom storage one thing that I want to mention is that again is the plumbing the way I did the plumbing here is um, <clears throat> I'm gonna get some light the plumbing there I rerouted all the plumbing uh, to this side because and then I created the p-trap right there now the reason why because I didn't want to lose this space here <clears throat> and as you can see even with these threaded rods I decided to put a, a very thin piece of plywood here and um, to uh, create another shelf uh, but also I cut it just slightly at an angle here so I can access this box here without having to remove it and when we're done we can go ahead and put these curtains back in place and we're good to go <clears throat> Um, one thing I do want to mention is that um, um, a lot of this stuff, the uh, shower, this is also storage for um, uh, the shower head and as you can see the line, the shower um, hose right here and as you're probably going to see the, the water line right there and when I get ready to shower I just put the shower head right here on top. Uh, this, this is the shower head holder so it, I can put it right there. and. What I do is, uh, as you can see here, um, I can just run this curtain around, just push it around. It runs uh, um, on the edge of this rail and then it stays in place and I create a circle out of this curtain. This is one and a half, um, almost two curtains in one and they work great. Plus they overlap right here. So it eliminates the possibility of getting water outside that enclosed environment. And at the bottom, at the base, I can remove that bench and I have a swimming pool. Well, it's a, do a dog pool, basically. It's 32 inches in diameter. Where it's, it works great, I've used it. But also I have a system where I can dis you know, uh, get rid of that water uh, through the floor to the gray tank, the gray water tank. Have some towels here. Decided to use some small hooks here from Ikea. Also, this is where I hang my uh, towel, the big towel, and I've got these uh, cup holders. I can put shampoo and soap in here, uh, so everything stays within reach when you shower, uh, even the medicine cabinet. The bathroom is, uh, well, you know, the toilet is actually inside this area, so you probably uh, noticed that this bench, it's not just a bench, but also it's my toilet. I open it like that, and it is go anywhere toilet. Um, has a seat. I did modify it. 
Um, the modification is just this piece of plastic right here. I added this um, and also put a bucket. This is a high quality bucket. It doesn't um, allow for any, uh, it stays really nice. It, I mean, we don't smell anything at all. Now, what I did also, I created some holes here and I put a PVC pipe behind it attached to the bottom of the toilet. And I'm gonna make a video to explain this. That other PVC pipe has a, uh, a marine grade uh, fan uh, that um, it is a 170 CFM fan that actually sucks a lot of air when you're sitting here especially with number two you can turn the fan on right here and that gets rid of the um, basically just gives you some uh, ventilation um, if you need uh, to go um, mainly just number two now this th this whole thing is designed uh, with a uh, female use in mind so I will explain that in the other video uh, without having to use a funnel or anything like that one thing that we have to uh, keep in mind here is that we don't like to use um, uh, public toilets but if we have to we can go ahead and do so but usually we're boondocking so you can either use nature and obviously leave no trace behind um, um, but the thing is that you know at night you can still use this here inside the camper this is high quality bucket and it's everything stays um, um, basically protected and we don't smell anything And we decided this toilet doesn't come with the padded seat or the skirt we just decided to build it that way so we so we're not staring at the toilet like that but it, i use this uh bench a lot um i just sit here again it is super comfortable and i can just do work here i could just watch uh you know work on my phone or just watch tv i can still watch tv from this angle um let me just show you very nice so that's just one good option um, this section here this is where I have my solar system again curtains instead of doors wooden doors this is my entire solar system what I'd like to show you here I'm sorry for the uh, the hand shaking um, this is a new battery it has not been installed yet I just purchased this about two weeks ago now this one I have used for about a year now it has exceeded my expectations and I decided to purchase a second one and as you can see just one battery everything here is working just from this battery lights I can operate the TV the 12 volt fridge and I'll come back to it but that's the battery that's the only working battery right there now very quickly I do have a charge a solar charge controller the Victron I have the uh, I have the fuse box I have the circuit breakers and this system again uh, it's not super complicated it's very simple even though it took me a while to uh, figure out how I'm gonna put things in place and I made my the wires myself uh, I obviously uh, um, you have to properly uh, size the wires because this is a 12 volt system so it requires a lot of heavy um, um, gauge wires like the wires for the inverter and also for the batteries as you can see I do have a shunt that blue thing is a shunt and I do have um, the Victron also has an app same as the uh, shunt and that is the bus bar this guy here okay I have a uh, uh, 2000 watt inverter uh, that provides 120 volt to this cooktop stove and also I have another machine that we use that's the reason why we have the inverter otherwise we wouldn't need it right here smoke detector fire extinguisher this gray box here this is the 112 volt sure power and it's a 15 amp but I do have the 30 amp adapter uh, the box next to it this is a uh, Ryobi uh, battery charger that I use for my handheld vacuum cleaner and other lamps or lights like this guy here I charge my batteries using that so that's my solar system
some cleaning stuff in a stainless steel bucket or a container so they stay protected these are real made um, uh, um, uh, sprays that really um, I'm gonna remove them and place them somewhere else but they they sit here for now lastly this um, box right here this is the kill switch for the solar panels I can just pull this out this is just the uh, uh, the kill switch for the air conditioner unit outside uh, mini house I decided to use this easy to use and um, in order to service the system emergency radio and that's it as you can see there's a, this space is very open um, and we like it like that this uh, again this fridge here is uh, 12 volt also it can use AC as well there is some storage underneath it. it it slides out and as I told you that I wanted a clean look here and they're on top of the fridge so I rewired all the plumbing and I'll show you here in a minute but I want I want it to look clean on top of that fridge i didn't want any plumbing um, in that area so i can also access the fridge without having to move it i think we're pretty much done mosquito screen we decided to put this uh, linen screen um, it um, I had the black one the RV style uh, screen but I decided not to do that it just makes the place darker and it provides you know this is works just as, as good uh, you can it's a see-through plus um, it allows for airflow as well but it's really nice and it, it just feels um, nice to have that color with the walls so it, this place is not dark now for privacy uh, purposes we have these curtains here very nice to have What I'm going to show you next is my water system um, and it's all right here behind this Moroccan tagine and these cooking pots. I only do this when I try to service the system otherwise I don't even touch these panels. just a foam to help with the noise from the pump what you see here is uh, as you can see see all the plumbing again don't worry about this this hot water being on, on the right and that's again it's by uh, necessity I run the cold water first and then I brought the hot water back from the water heater but I didn't have a lot of room so I put the hot water on top of the cold water and that actually helps with uh, uh, the, the cold water uh, line so it doesn't freeze but what matter I have shutoffs here but what matters is that the, the faucet the left side is hot and the right one is cold so that's what matters right here what I have is um, I have the main shutoff valve right here from the tank and I do have a, uh, a filter and then it goes around to the pump and the expansion tank this expansion tank is very important because it, it uh, helps with the uh, a, it creates a better uh, flow especially when you when I shower and also see those drops those few drops normally if I didn't have that expansion tank that pump would be um, it we would actually just a few drops would trigger the pump and then um, that can be annoying so I, that's the reason why this is important
and it's easy to put back in place. Now the fridge for the travel mode, for the fridge, um, again, I do have some storage here behind, underneath the fridge. I can store up to 40 cans of, of food. Um, I, I use that a lot, so there's a lot of storage underneath that. Um, for the travel mode, I have these two pins. I can put one here on this side, and I put a bungee cord. I have one already. I think that's part of it right there in the back. I just put it right here, attach it to this handle, and I'm good to go. You know, I do have to do some packing, uh, but it's not much. I do have to protect that tagine, especially it's uh, made of clay. And also I have to pack some other items to make sure that they're not, um, they're not all over the place when I get to my destination. I do have some storage here under the bed. It's a slide out. I use this as a pantry most of the time and also I've got storage under the bed for blankets and pillows, things like that. I did a lot of, with the, with the pre-wiring, I did actually spend a lot of time pre-wire everything. That's why you don't see the wires, but I know I documented everything so I know where everything is and I can access it if I have to. But I actually overdid the pre-wiring. I used high quality, pure copper wires and the connectors, I use high quality connectors. So I wanna make sure that I did an overkill when it comes to that because some, I, I knew that I might not be able to access certain panels but that was one thing that I did and I have not have a problem and I boondocked I in Arizona Nevada California I took this trailer to some rough rough places um, you know the tow vehicle is the FJ cruiser it's a TRD version so it goes it goes you know I mean it goes but I have to be mindful of this trailer and the limitations of this trailer but even with that I was able to uh, go to some remote places and I never had a problem light switch, dimmable switch. Now let me show you the outside. The trailer again is a 6x12 all aluminum RV style door. I have some lights, these are removable. I can remove these uh, exterior lights. I need to adjust that light, they're solar lights. And I, the idea is I want to make sure that it looks just like a utility trailer. I didn't want it, I didn't want it to look like a camper. Uh, but when I close both doors, it just looks like a cargo trailer. And again, that's by choice. I'll show you how I secure the trailer. In terms of safety, I have, uh, I have some great tips that I'm gonna provide uh, to make sure that nobody steals your trailer. I do enjoy this patio area. Um, it is just super nice to have, uh, to see the elevation. Um, you know, I can walk barefoot on top of the patio from the kitchen. Uh, and it just feels like, uh, it just feels like home. It was challenging to work on this trailer. It is a Vino's, uh, but also it's slanted. So I didn't want to cut these uh, planks. I, I used the whole plank and you see the curve. I struggle with that, but I managed to do that. The choice of color also, it's white, but it's not super bright white. It's off white compared to the ultra pure white on the cabinet on it and the trim. These colors just help, uh, you know, with the, uh, uh, the uh, atmosphere here inside the trailer also it makes it a lot bigger. It's only six by 12. One last thing I wanna cover with you before you end this video 
um, is um, this. What I managed to do is, um, you, you couldn't see the uh, insulation because this is really well insulated trailer. I do have a lot of storage. I didn't show you my gray water tank. I showed you the fresh water tank. The gray water tank is actually underneath the trailer. I have a lot of storage underneath the trailer and I'm going to make videos and talk more about that because that is just awesome to have that storage underneath the trailer. But what I managed to do more importantly is that I decided to keep all the records, everything, the manuals, uh, every piece of appliance, every piece of equipment that I installed, I would manage to keep the paperwork for as reference and also for troubleshooting. As you can see, just to give you an example, I have the Victron manual here. Um, this is for the cooktop stove. This is for the ice cold fridge, even for the TV. Um, and I actually used one of these manuals when I was in Arizona. I had a problem with the an older inverter that I was able to identify the problem. Uh, that was great. I do have the original design here. I've got my notes so I know where everything is, the, the wires and everything. I can tell what's behind the walls. Also, if I decide to sell this camper, I would like to I would like the new owner to know where things are and if they can, uh, you know, troubleshoot the the trailer if they if they need to. Because if if without this, it's going to be very difficult to know where things are, especially things behind the walls, and it's just going to be uh, hard to do. So I hope you got something out of this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up follow the channel because I do have a lot of videos that I'm going to post so I can help uh, other people with their build. I do want to thank the people that posted their videos before me. They helped me a lot so I want to thank you for that. Until next time, thank you so much and have a great day.